Well, those of us that have had a little more experience in, in jails uh, took it upon ourselves to try to help calm the nerves of, of these women because they were in total shock of what they had seen on their ship and then being placed in an Israeli prison. The stories that we heard were, were remarkable. The story of one, one of the women that had first come to me as I boarded the Marmi Marmara, uh, as one of the new people on the ship, uh, I went into the women's area, the bottom part of the, uh, the ship, uh, as it was a Muslim, Arab, predominantly ship, uh, uh, they had made accommodations for women, that women were not to be staying up in the upper decks with the men, that we had our own area, an eating area and a sleeping area. And when I came into that area, a woman from Turkey came over and in limited English said, oh, please come and join me and my friends. We're having some tea, we'll talk. Well, when she came into the prison, someone said, did you know her husband was killed? Yeah, her husband was killed. Uh, the, he was the coach of the national taekwondo team of Turkey, a real terrorist as the Israeli government continued to call all of us on, on those ships as terrorists, as our own U.S. Congress people have called us terrorists. Uh, Bart Sherman, a congressperson from California, said every American that's been involved in that flotilla should be arrested. And anyone that has any dealings with that flotilla should be arrested, and any, any international person on the flotilla should never ever be given a visa to the United States. Chuck Schumer, senator from New York, has essentially said the same thing as has Carolyn Maloney, a U.S. House of Representatives from New York also. So when Bart Sherman said we should be arrested, I was back in Washington when he said that, and so I, as a survivor of the flotilla and several other people who had been involved in the organization of the Greek Free Gaza Movement and some who had been to Gaza before, uh, we marched right over to Bart Sherman's office to say, here we are, you know, arrest us. Let's, let's go to court and let's see who the terrorists are. Let's see who is funding uh, violence toward people. Let's see what the role of the U.S. Congress is in this and the total support of whatever Israel seems to get, want to do, to give them a blank check, to never hold them accountable. And that's really what's happening now. I've been so disappointed in, in my own government in standing up to the Israelis to say this was wrong. You cannot continue to do this, this violence against Palestinians. You can't continue to do this on the international scale. But that's not what the Obama administration said. They did mention, well, it was regrettable that the, the um, flotilla was attacked. It was regrettable. But, you know, when Helen Thomas made her comments, that she essentially got fired over, that those comments were reprehensible. But the murder of nine people, regrettable. Uh, just this last week, President Obama met with uh, Netanyahu, and I was stunned by the camaraderie that there was there. That indeed, Israel has been given a pass for yet more violence against uh, the people of the world, that indeed the special and unique circumstances that, uh, of the security of the state of Israel means that there's no accountability under the non-proliferation treaty for their nuclear weapons, uh, that rather than saying the illegal settlements must end, there was nothing said about that at all until a question was asked at, during a press conference. And then at the very end of the presidential statement was a warning not to the Israelis but to the Palestinians. The Palestinians again, that you should not embarrass Israel. You should not embarrass Israel and you should not take any actions that could cause violence. Well, I would hope that he would have turned that around, but he didn't. So what are we going to do? Well, I say let's go back. Let's challenge this blockade. Let's challenge that.
because we know that that challenge did work. I mean, right now the Israeli government has been pounded by the international opinion with the exception of the United States of America. Every other country of the world has been screaming at the Israelis about what they've doing, they've been doing, and indeed they've changed some of their policies. That now they are not just allowing 42 products into Israel that they're saying now that there's a list of only the prohibited items, that they are going to expand the numbers of convoys that can come in, although they have not yet done that. We've got to really watch what their words are versus their actions. Uh, they've said that the policy from 2002 on no movement of people in and out of Gaza or very little movement continues to stand. So it's a reason that we have to go back. And in going back, we will, in, in either late September or early October, we'll be having another flotilla. And we, the people of the United States, need to have our own ship, a ship to challenge US policies as well as Israeli policies. So we're fundraising for that. <laughs> We are going to have what's called the U.S. ship to Gaza. We are asking for donations from all over the country. We're trying to raise, hang on to your hat, between $300,000 and $370,000 to buy the smallest of the vessels that will make that trip, that will only take 20 people. But it's so important. You know, on the last flotilla, there were only 14 Americans on that whole float, all those flotilla ships. We've got to show that the people of America care. Even in the face of the latest uh, US Supreme Court uh, uh, decision that has really scared a lot of people about material aid to terrorism, uh, that indeed we have legal opinions from the Center for Constitutional Rights that says we aren't anywhere close to uh, the decision that the, the Supreme Court has made on that, which essentially means that isn't it odd that you cannot talk peace and nonviolent methods to a terrorist group to try to get them to use peaceful means to affect change? That in fact, that now is a criminal act in the United States of America. But donating to a US ship is not a criminal act. So we would appreciate any donations. Thanks for coming out. The first question that I was asked when I told my uh, USS Liberty shipmates about my intention to go on the uh, Freedom Flotilla was, uh, well, I guess the uh, G-rated version is, what on earth are you doing? <laughs> um, it goes all the way back to 1979 when Jim Ennis published Assault on the Liberty. Up to that time, I was, uh, to borrow a phrase from another, uh, another segment of society, I was in the closet with regard to the liberty. I just ignored it and, uh, and let everything pass. In 1979, he wrote Assault on the Liberty. I read it, as did a bunch of other USS Liberty survivors. And uh, we got angry to find out what had happened since, uh, since the attack. In other words, virtually nothing. So, naive little us, we started writing letters and we formed an organization called the USS Liberty Veterans Association. We, we wrote members of Congress, Department of Defense, thinking, uh, you know, just write a few letters and we'll get all this taken care of because the US government has never conducted an investigation of the attack. Uh, quite to our surprise, it wasn't that easy and it still hasn't been because they haven't conducted an investigation. But in their responses, in reading their responses, we became probably more interested than most Americans in the Middle East situation. Uh, we're not experts by any means, but we get to, uh, we do a little more research than most people. So when the boats to Gaza started, I knew about them and I was following their, uh, their progress. And in a very weak moment, earlier this year, I guess it was in January, February, I emailed Cynthia McKinney, who I had known from email contact, and I knew she was a part of the, uh, one of the, the uh, boats to Gaza. I emailed her and I said, Cynthia, since you've been uh, on the boats and you're in contact with these people, how about seeing if you can get me on one of the boats? And she said that was a good idea. So she got in contact with the uh, Free Gaza Movement, 
and uh, they immediately accepted, you know, said, uh, yeah, that they'd be ha glad to have me on board. About a month or two passed and uh, come to find out that uh, there was so many people who wanted to go on, the, on their boats that uh, there really wasn't room for me, so I was waitlisted.